Chuck. Yeah. I'm about to describe to you okay. the end of the world as we know it. Wait, isn't that R.E.M.? <laughs> the world as we know it is deeply infused with space-borne assets. Okay. So much of what you care about in life is enabled, empowered by the fact that we have satellites orbiting above us. So true. And there's a scenario where there are satellites no more. So how many artificial satellites were orbiting Earth total on October 4th, 1957? Oh, that's uh, Sputnik, right? I'm waiting for a number. I'm gonna go with one. So that launched literally and figuratively the space race. Right. NORAD right. is tracking this. As well as Santa? <laughs> they do I track th Santa. I thought that Santa was their only job. In addition to protecting the free world, right. they track Santa. They track Santa. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they got to make sure nothing knocks him out of the sky. Ex <laughs> well, because, listen, let's be honest. You know, once he starts flying near Russia, it's very <laughs> it possible could it could happen. <laughs> they get all the presents. <laughs> yeah, it rains down the presents. So they're tracking satellite launches and their orbits and this sort of thing. And not until early 70s mm -hmm. does NORAD publish the data okay. on these satellites. And that's when Donald Kessler said, you know, if this keeps up, and we start loading orbital space mm -hmm. with these objects, Right, things could happen here that we know happen in the asteroid belt. He thought to himself, if the same thing happens here, it would probably happen on a shorter time scale because the orbital belt is not as large as right. the asteroid belt. And so you don't need as many satellites as you have asteroids right. to repeat the same phenomenon. So he wrote a paper exploring this idea. Satellites are being launched at an exponential rate, okay? okay? So October 4th, 1957, mm -hmm. there was one satellite. Mm -hmm. October 4th, 2024, 7,000 satellites. Not all of them operational. About right. half are dead. Well, see, there's the problem. We're leaving our junk. <laughs> In space, <laughs> space junk. So that's not the only kind of space junk. Was it 2009? There were two satellites that actually hit each other. Oh. Yes. I did not know that. That actually happened. Okay. Now, consider, if all satellites are going in the same direction, most, most. are going west to east around the Earth. Okay. Then they're not really in as in much the, risk of right. hitting each other because they all have to go about the same speed to what? maintain that orbit. I but, think you just made it a solution. However... Not all satellites are launched at the same latitude. If you're uh, launched at a higher latitude, I see. you still have to orbit the center of the Earth, which right. means you cut diagonally right. at some angle across the orbits of other satellites. Now, that makes sense. And some satellites orbit pole to pole. Right. Those tend to be uh, reconnaissance satellites, because you go on the other side, peek what's going on, and bring that come picture, back around. come back around and send the data back. Okay. Okay? All right. And there's some satellites that orbit counter to the others. So... Yes, it is a dangerous racetrack. So we need basically traffic lights in space. Yes, I, yes, or some other traffic controlling phenomenon. Oh. Right? Now some satellites that are precious, they have certain extra fuel. If they know they're on a collision course, they can just adjust okay. and get out of harm's way. Now that, then that can't just be a requirement for all <laughs> no. satellites? It's not quite there yet. Okay. All right. so. In the early days, no one was taking it seriously. They knew it was an interesting extrapolation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about it yet. Right. Okay? No, yeah. All right. So guess who was the first one to take out their own satellite? America did. Well, you, we are number one. <laughs> if you can show you can take out your own satellite. Right. That means. Right. That means what? That means you can take out my satellite. Exactly. Right. NASA, upon learning of this anti-satellite test right. in 1985, is actively designing the forthcoming space station. And it considered how it might alter that design to make it resistant, resistant. to debris that it might encounter. Okay. And to this day, you can find pockmarks on the outer shell. So that's in the 1980s. Right. Before China had anything space related. Right. Okay. So they say, hey, China's not even a player yet. Wow. Okay. So then we're okay with that. There it is. All right. The, the years go by. In the, we finish out the 80s, then the 90s, then the 2000s, and then lo and behold, China did it. 
it would have been not so bad, except that their satellite was much higher in orbit, where there's hardly any air molecules to slow down the pieces and have, have them re-enter. Re right, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the ones, the very high up ones in geosynchronous orbit, they're pretty safe. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. Right. They're just looking down. Yeah, and right they there. stay in the same spot with the Earth exactly, no matter what. Exactly, So, so they're just, they're, they're chilling. They're cool. Uh, middle Earth orbit, uh, those are the ones if you destroy them, the particles never leave. Right. And low Earth orbit, if you destroy them, they'll fall out eventually, not immediately. Right. So maybe we're saved by the fact that yeah, they'll come enough out a little to fa faster before yeah. they put other satellites in harm's way. The smithereens that became of that Chinese satellite, most of them are still in orbit. But, okay, we we didn't want to risk harm of this actually colliding to Earth. But did ours deorbit? At the, yeah, at so ours was a low enough Earth orbit, so probably none of those particles remain in orbit. U-S-A, U-S-A. <laughs> That's all. Okay. <laughs> so then, oh, no, Russia did it. And then who's left? India. India. So India does it next. Oh, man. They take out one of their own satellites. Now everybody can show that they can kick that their ass in, in the satellite. So now we have mutual assured destruction of satellites. <laughs> but, I guess we can all back off. <laughs> so now, but the problem is the debris field is no longer just satellites, it's satellite debris. Wow. Okay. That's the true. fragments. All right. So now you have all these particles moving how fast? 18,000 miles an hour. Right. If you're hit with anything at 18,000 miles an hour, mm. that I'm sorry, that's like way faster than a rifle bullet. Yeah. Okay. No, you're, you're vaporized. Yeah. Well, not your whole body, but just at the yeah, point where you're point, hit. Yeah. yeah, it'll just, yeah, poof. Yeah. All right. You got all these fragments. Yeah. Now, here's what's interesting. And here's how you get the Kessler effect, now known as the Kessler syndrome. Okay. So the full up syndrome is either satellite is intentionally destroyed mm -hmm. or two do collide. Mm -hmm. Now you have more pieces than just the two. Mm. One satellite and one satellite, now they collide, now they make 100 pieces. Right. Now you have 100 pieces moving at 18,000 miles an hour, scattering away from that collision point. Well, they're gonna hit something. They're gonna hit something, they hit something, they collide that. They now you got 100, 100,000. 100, 100,000, and this, the number of particles that can do harm grows exponentially. Right. And it will take satellites out on the time scale of their orbit. A full orbit, lower Earth orbit's about 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Okay, so okay. what happens is, if that's the time scale of an orbit, and you start busting stuff up, and it starts taking out other satellites, oh, man. this will happen fast. Yeah. And you have a total annihilation of 100% of all satellites in orbit, mm. just dropping out like flies. Do you realize how much of our economy yeah. flows out of satellite and our defense system? Oh my, eh, uh, uh, all of it, all of it. Oh my Even goodness. withdrawing money from an ATM. I don't have that problem. Yo! There's <laughs> not something I, enc I encounter. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to pay you more, yeah. Chuck. Okay. I didn't know it was that like, bad. Yeah, when you put the card in, it goes, seriously, bro? <laughs> so the Kessler syndrome could be catastrophic to modern civilization as we have come to know it. Mm. Now, there's a movie that explored the consequences of the Kessler syndrome without even naming it that. Oh, really? That was the movie Gravity. Uh, in it, they get stranded in space right? because somebody, I don't remember who, destroys one of their That's own satellites, right. s scatters debris, yes. and one by one, the satellites get taken out. So that's the Kessler syndrome, that's, and who knows? It's horrifying. It's horrifying. Uh, we don't know really how close we are. There are many more satellites getting launched every year, especially in the Elon Musk So yeah, we just keep throwing them up there, huh? We keep throwing them up there. Because that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, it's just another thing to worry about before you go to sleep. <laughs> All right, good to have you always. Always a pleasure. All right, this is Neil deGrasse Tyson for Star Talk, Explainers Edition on the end of the world via our own satellites. <laughs> Till next time, keep looking up or down, whichever safer in that scenario. While the Kessler syndrome hasn't reached a crisis point yet, the further we push the boundaries of exploration, the more we have to account for. Take astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore. They spent nine months on the ISS after Boeing Starliner spacecraft ran into technical issues. SpaceX is finally bringing them home, but coverage on it tells two different stories. 
Go to ground.news slash StarTalk to see how some outlets praise SpaceX's role in the rescue while others question Elon Musk's true intentions. Both sides are important to the conversation on how business, technology and policy collide. That's why StarTalk has relied on our partners at Ground News to see past the first headline we find on an issue. Their app and website was founded by a former NASA engineer who applied the same precision needed for space missions to how we analyze the news here on Earth. With one swipe, we can compare coverage on key issues on space and science with data on each source's political bias, credibility and financial backing. Go to ground.news slash StarTalk or scan our QR code to subscribe. Our viewers will save 40% off their Vantage plan with our link. That's $5 a month for unlimited access to context and clarity on the news shaping the future of space exploration.